Hi, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today, we're going to cover our favorite topic, the Primary Vision Frac spread count, and we've separated out so that we'll have another OPEC update separately that we can go through some of the little nuances that have come out with some of the new estimates on demand from OPEC, from IEA, from what we're thinking. And just as a reminder, please like, share, subscribe. And we do have our end of year report, which helps to put some horsepower numbers behind everything that we talk about on this show. So reach out for a table of contents and a free sample, and we'd love to hear from you. So without uh, w- without uh, delaying it any further, the frac spread count came in at 146. So we had a decline of 13 from 159 to 146. It, it's it, you know this may sound shocking or it may sound big, but as we said last week and we wrote in our report that came out today, it's it's seasonal. I, there's always a seasonal shift down at this point in time. Uh, you know, a lot of guys have completed their work. They've they've achieved what they thought what they uh, were planning for, and then kind of set themselves up into year end. And we typically have people going home for the last uh, two weeks or so of December, and then things start to get back to normal in January. The question is really going to be what is normal and what does normal look like in January, which we we're going to cover in our end of year report. And then a new section that will be included uh, if you make the purchase for that end of year one. So just to give some kind of color as to what was the driver, you know, as we were talking about last week and we were talking uh, off camera, it's really the smaller, um, the smaller areas like uh, Arcoma, Cherokee, uh, Green River, you know, uh, the um, Fort Worth, all these, all these places went from either two to one or one to zero. And it's just, we're starting to see some normalization of activity as things slow down. Now, the, the one thing that we do have to preface is we won't have the normal slowdown. So typically we lose anywhere from 40 to 60 uh, you know, spreads. We're not going to see that same type of uh, number move, but we'll probably have a similar percentage move lower just as guys look to, you know, it's been a long year for everybody. So I'm pretty sure everyone's happy to take, uh, take a couple weeks off and then kind of uh, hopefully come back rejuvenated. Now, when we look at the frac spread count, and again, going back to 2019, you can see that we, we've, we're starting right around when we normally do. Here, you can see the move from about, you know, that 375 that went down to about 300. And it's, again, very normal for this time of year. The question is going to be, what does the next couple of months look like? And, you know, we, we, we'll go through it in the report, but just to kind of give some high level color as to what is that. You know, we're looking at this where the Permian will continue to see some support. Uh, we're, we're, as, as we get into January, we're likely to see a quick turnaround and back to where we uh, closed out, you know, last week. But we're really going to struggle to get past that 160, that 165 level. Uh, our expectations as we go into the end of the year is to, is to settle out at about uh, between about 140 and 145. So to come in at 146 right now, you know, it makes sense. We'll probably get another seven or so spreads coming off and and settle out. And and if you look at that four week rolling average, we're right in line to where we we have been at, even after this big surge. And just to put into context, so here, you know, going over the last three months, we've gone from 89 to to 159. Uh, obviously, we had the low of 54. Now, it's going to be hard to maintain this trajectory just given where we sit in just crude pricing, uh, you know, physical prices. You know, we now have LLS or Louisiana Light Suite and Magellan East Houston over $50. Again, positives to see. And the, 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 the interesting thing that we're looking at is, okay, well, what is driving crude pricing? Because clearly we have... COVID issues, we have demand issues, which we've covered in the EIA show, the uh, the economy show, and then in its supply on the OPEC side. But you know, the biggest pushback was, well, dollars falling. As and and for those that remember, there is typically an inverse correlation between the U.S. dollar and oil. Whereas the U.S. The US dollar falls, oil goes higher. And that has really held true. Now, oil also became a favorite risk on asset where guys were looking to to take advantage of COVID, vaccines, lockdowns ending, things starting to get back to normal and trying to take that look forward. So between dollar going down, risk on assets, you had this big power move to the upside. But now, as we're starting to see 
the meticulous nature of, of what it takes to get vaccines into the area, which we covered in, in econ uh, segment one. And now with the dollar starting to kind of bounce and strengthen a little bit, it's, we still have this bid within, within WTI Cushing, within Brent. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses through the end of the year, as we've had some softening in, uh, in some of the physical numbers you know, we had a little bit of a, a strength in Abu Dhabi, but then we had some drop down with um, some other spreads against dated Brent. So again, it's going to be an interesting move, but all we were looking at here, and as we look at the, tra the trajectory that we've been in, this is something where we'll, we'll get a bounce back. And, you know, you can see that we've had these ebbs and flows. We'll come down to about 140, probably lose another, an, again, another six or seven spreads into year end, flatten out, you know, uh, around that level and then start to go back up. But we, we think that we've hit a, a peak when we get to that 160, 165, and it's going to be hard to really break through that unless we get some meaningful adjustments in crude pricing. But Again, we're trying to take advantage of what's there. We see a lot of hedging coming out. But let's look at what has been done and what, what are we seeing going forward. So when we think about the previous times, you know, normally as, as we look at 2016, we look at 2015, uh, 18, 19, this is the normal time period for the adjustment. So there's really nothing crazy to see with this walk back, but we have to appreciate what has happened so far this year, or at least I should say, you know, coming from the EIA, looking at completed wells and drilled, but un uncompleted wells. So you can see from July to November, we've had a big increase in, uh, in, well, I shouldn't say big, but about a 200 well increase between July and November. And for those following along based on the amount of frac spread counts that have come in, in the first two weeks of September, uh, of December, we'll get another big uh, increase in terms of, uh, you know, that October into November into December. And again, that's because they're trying to make up time for, you know, the, the extended holiday going into the end of the year. The bigger point will be the drilled but uncompleted wells or ducks. So you can see that we've been working through some of the duck count. Uh, July was at about 7,800. Now we're at about 7,300. And we've had a pretty steady decline pretty much across all the basins with obviously the Permian and the Eagleford seeing their uh, a bigger drawdown, the Anadarko seen a relatively large one. And it's just going to be a matter of, okay, well, we've seen rigs now maintaining their level. We, we had another increase in rigs, especially in the Permian. As some of the Permian spreads, we went from about... Uh, about 73 to 68, and that's something that will continue to bleed lower over the next two weeks. But when we look at this duck count now, let's look at you know where things sit, be, and you can see from about let's call it the peak of June 2019. From that point, we started to see a pretty steady decline in the drilled but uncompleted wells. Uh, on, a, on a national level. Then when we start breaking it down into pieces, you can see that we're, we've been fairly steady between June and into of 2019 into now. You know, some of the ones that have seen the bigger drawdowns has, has been the Eagleford, Anadarko, Appalachia. Those are the ones that have accounted for some of the, that normalization. It's the Permian that has maintained that activity on the rig side and will maintain it on the frac spread side because we, what are we what are we starting to see for 20, uh, 2021? We're starting to see activity getting uh, ready in the Permian, specifically the Delaware. The Eagle Fur remain, is maintaining its um, uh, it, its its fairly strong capacity, and then LNG exports uh, have been uh, setting records, which has been supportive of the Haynesville and uh, and some additional Appalachia activity. Now Appalachia, Bakken typically have an excessive drawdown. Uh, especially uh, the Bakken being in North Dakota, it's fairly cold. So there is where what what normally comes off in December will stay down in January and then start to recover in the end of February into March. So we're, what we're expecting is Texas is going to get more love as they normally do on a seasonal basis, and then we'll get some additional activity. But again, most companies or most EMPs have positioned themselves to close out the year with a fairly strong uh, production number of based on, I mean, given not based on where we started, but where we were in the middle of the year, try to get to about 10, that 10.9 million barrels a day on an exit rate. 
survive through Q1 with minimal decline curve, have a little bit of a decline set into Q2, but really try to bridge those two, those two quarters, those six months or so, and look at where Q3 is. Because by the time we get to Q3, what will we have had? You know, we should ha- we should see what OPEC has done in terms of those 500,000 barrel a day increases uh, January through um, April. We'll see of how has activity increased? Have, have we seen an activity increase? Are refiners starting to ramp up? Has the COVID vaccine really taken hold? Are people getting uh, feeling better about the economy, going out and doing more? And these are going to be things that we'll start to see. And we've already heard some EMPs saying, look, Q1 is a, is a wait and see. We're going to see, we're going to, you know, feel out the market, see how things are settling, look at spreads and see if there's some opportunity, some hedging opportunity. But again, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, you know, especially given where, where the energy space has, has been and where, you know, trying to see some of those capital controls, you know, roll through the, uh, the system. So that's all we have for you today. Uh, we've had some exciting shows. We had the EIA show, uh, we had the economy show where we really looked at trade and some of the global macro views. And then coming out tomorrow, we're going to have our OPEC show, just giving a quick update on supply, some of the demand numbers, what are we expecting into 2021. And then again, please remember, we do have our end of year report. And then with that, will come another uh, little uh, 15 pager that's going to kind of show, you know, really go in depth into what are we thinking for 2021 and how is this going to plan out on a horsepower side, on a demand side, because, you know, we talk about demand, but where is supply? How much, how much horsepower is available? You know, if, if it's been sitting there for six months, is it still usable? You know, we we start to kind of answer some of those questions and where do we see kind of that crossing point where we could start to see additional uh, pricing power coming into the, uh, uh, the service space, which you know sounds funny to say when you think about pricing power, but hopefully you know, we start to get to a more normalized market as we head into the, uh, the second half of next year. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. And I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network.